Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, I'd like to talk about a question that keeps coming up and uh, gives my thoughts on it. And that is, what is meant by double weighted? It's something that uh, a lot of uh, a lot of Taiji teachers use the term. And I'd like to uh, to clarify it a, a little bit because it's one of those things that has become um, uh, almost dogma in uh, in in the uh, in Taiji instruction, and it's a, a lot more nuanced than than I know that I considered it, you know, for a long time, and the way I taught it for a long time, and. Uh, the uh, there's a, a general interpretation that uh, that we hear a lot, and that is basically that you don't want your weight to settle to be evenly distributed between your feet. That you want to have it more weighted in one foot or the other, one leg or the other, and that's sort of a, a general idea that gets uh, that is promoted and one that I, I too have promoted it from time to time. And I don't think it's a necessarily a bad idea for uh, beginners to just have them aware that, oh yeah, don't, don't park on, uh, on two feet, you know, you wanna keep it moving. But if you, I know in my Taiji Tran forms, uh, all of them, they, there are moments where you are encouraged to have a 50-50 split in your feet, you know, starting right from the from the very beginning of, of of most young style forms, where you start and you're you are starting in a in a 50-50 weight distribution, and then you move into cross hands position. Um, um, you know, there are different places along the way that where you're in that in that posture. And then you and you can also say that every transition, there will be a point where you're passing from, passing through that 50-50 point. You don't linger there, but there, there was a point where you're shifting, you know, you're going from one leg to the other, you're going to, there's a, at some point where the, it will be 50-50. So it, you don't want to make it dogmatic. You don't want to make it like never, ever, ever get into, you know, that position where your weight is 50-50 because it, it's actually a good thing to do. So is there a, a, another way of understanding this, this concept? And double weighted is one way that that, that term is translated, but it's not actually the, the, um, the only way or maybe even the, the best way. So I wanted to read something to you from, uh, this is from uh, the Taiji Chuan classic from uh, uh, Wang Chung Yu. I think it's Wang Chung, is that it? Uh, hold on, let me see. Wang Jung Yu, yes, Wang Jung Yu. Um, anyway, the uh, this is a uh, Yang Jing Ming's interpretation of that, and it's uh, he said when there is double heaviness, mutual he interprets as mutual resistance, then there is stagnation. Often, after several years of dedicated training, one can still one still cannot apply this neutralization and is controlled by the opponent. The reason for this is the fault of double heaviness is, is that the fault of double heaviness is not understood. And his comment on that is, so whether your partner attacks high or low, left or right, you do not resist them. Instead, you yield and follow, adhering to him patiently until you have good opportunity to attack. If you struggle against him, the liveliness of the interaction stagnates and the victory will go to the one with the most external strength. In Taiji, the attacking hand is considered heavy because it is putting weight or pressure on your partner. The Chinese character Zhong can be translated as weight and Trang as pair or double. Therefore, some authors translate Shuang Zhong as double weighting. However, the same character Zhong can also be pronounced Chong translated as repeated overlapping. Therefore, Xuan Chong can be translated as double overlapping. This means mutual covering and resistance and has a sense of 
two forces struggling against each other, each striving for the upper hand. If you study for many years but never grasp the importance of avoiding this mutual resistance, then you'll never get the knack of neutralizing your partner's energy. Then it goes on to the translation, which is, to avoid this fault, you must know yin and yang. To adhere means to yield. To yield means to adhere. Yin not separate from yang, yang not separate from yin. Yin and yang mutually cooperate. Understanding this is understanding jin, dong jin. So uh, what he's talking about there is not so much as when you're doing your form, but whenever you're playing, say, push hands or you're sparring or whatever, and whenever you get into that thing where you're uh, like that and the forces are locked up, that is where you have that, that, uh, uh, that double uh, pressure or double entwining. So there's there, and the solution to that is to one yin, one yang, which in the context of the classic that this was written in the, I think the 1800s and uh, Wang Zhong Yu's classic. And uh, that's the source of, of most of the, uh, the teaching that has come out of that, the idea of double weighted. And so it's in a particular reference to a sparring or push hands or whatever, where there's, there is conflict and that you get locked up. And it's because you have forgotten how to, or you don't know how to properly follow your partner and lead into emptiness to be able to get more yin and more yang. So that's, that is the, the, the source of it to my understanding of uh, where that idea comes from, double weighted. And it's become more interpreted to like how you do your form, whether or not you are you know, in your one leg or the other, waiting one leg or one leg, one leg or the other. Um, as I said, that you know, that I think it's not a bad thing to teach beginners because you want them to get the idea, and that they're not ready for the the subtlety of understanding substantial, insubstantial, yin and yang quite yet. They may understand, hear the words, but to actually feel it in your body, that takes. You know, a certain amount of practice. And so, you know, in, the, in that quote, he said, you know, after you've been doing this a while, you've been doing this for years, and you still don't get the idea, it's because you haven't understood this, this idea of locking up, you know, resisting uh, force rather than, than yielding and following that, that, that force. So having said that, I think there's still a benefit to be had in an awareness of this, of where your weight is, of course. And, but beyond that, you're going into the connection that we have, energetic connection we have. So we've been talking a lot lately about substantial and insubstantial, particularly as applies to the way we are moving, the way the, the legs are, you know, moving, uh, the way they, the, the qua is, is translating the energy you know, and, and coordinating that with the torso. So the um, learning how to, to differentiate substantial and insubstantial is the senior datum here. And that is, so that is when you can grasp that and assigning left and right is not a bad idea too, because then you're, you're flipping back and forth in your, and the hemispheres of your brain. Anytime I'm, I'm feeling into my right leg, I'm actually activating my, the left side of my, my brain. And when I'm going into my left leg, I'm, I'm activating the right side of my, my brain. And so getting those two coordinated creates a enhanced um, integration of your, your mental functions, getting outside of just thinking about things to actually feeling into them, you start to open up other parts of your nervous system, which have been lying dormant. They, they exist there as potentialities, but 
as we're exploring into these things and we're trying to get into that understanding Jin part, we have to move beyond the mere thinking process and into knowing without thinking to be able to expand into a super conscious state. And that requires stopping, slowing everything down and really being observant of what's going on inside your neshi, which is that internal looking is the, is the key there. And that's what opens up the understanding jinn and moving into spiritual illumination. So we get getting that understanding and actually the, the capacity to feel the substantial and insubstantial, the connections that are exist within the body and how that relates to the connections with the environment until we feel the energy, then we're starting to play a bigger game. We're starting to get out of just something that we're going through, uh, you know, a choreograph routine and into something where we have to really feel into it. And, and then the new possibilities that, that exist that are inherent within that understanding start to present themselves to us. They come you know, we can look for them, but they also come unbidden too. They, we like, you know, you'll wake up and like, there it'll be there or you'll start to do your form and like, oh, this is new. And it, that you're constantly in a, you have the potential of being surprised by something that you've done thousands of times. And that to me is the fun part. So we constantly have this opportunity of discovering something really cool in something that is quite familiar. So, um, any questions on this before we get up and Peter? You're on mute, Peter. Yeah, wonderfully rich and compelling. Uh, I want to, uh, uh, yeah, I want to check my understanding briefly. It seems that you're, um, you're kind of talking about three um, levels of application of the notion of double waiting as, as a kind of way of being stuck to avoid. Uh, the one is being flat-footed when your weight is on both feet. The second one is really uh, kind of missing the uh, reciprocity of yin and yang in, in the um, the sort of dialogue with a partner, uh, so you get you get jammed up that way. Um, so the so it, like the first one is like physical is in the realm of physical weight. Uh, the second one is in the realm of yin and yang in the push pull of of um, you know partner work. But the third one is in the realm of substantial and insubstantial. Uh, in 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 a sense, the vertical dimension or the dimension of inwardness uh, or depth in in one's own um, internal psychophysical process that um, you uh, that you want to sort of be kind of with the the flow that involves that continuum of internal substantial and insubstantial. Is that... That's an excellent summary, Peter. Wow. Okay. That's that, 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 that perfect. Perfect is, uh, it sounds like an exaggeration, but I, yeah, but I'm glad that, that I, I wanted to check because it's. Would you really accept not bad? What? Would yeah, you accept not bad? Better, not too, not better. too bad. <laughs> but thank you. Ooh. Yeah. No, no. Don't saddle me with perfection, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not, uh, but it's real. <laughs> It's really enlightening. That's you know that 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 connection that you know that um, the uh, the connection between those you know those three levels of ways of being stuck is really really interesting. Cool, good, Nick. Um, sorry. Um, yeah, I'm wondering. Uh, 
So one of the things I sometimes, the way I, I sometimes talk about this, especially when we're talking about the things, horse stance or half horse stance, that things that are obviously equal pressure in both feet, you know, um, is to begin to connect your first and third. <laughs> um, example you're talking about by asking people to imagine they have like a, like a jewel watch bearing in, in the Dantian and, and to actually, while they may feel equal pressure there, but to have them put their weight, their, uh, their substance in that, in that area in over that jewel bearing. And it helps people not get flat footed and, and locked into their feet. Um, I, I don't know. What, what's that word you're saying? Jewel bearing? What, what, what is that? Jewel bearing, like a, like the diamond watch bearing, you know, like the old fashioned uh, uh, 17 jewel watch movements, right? Where oh, they, okay, you know, okay, okay. The jewel bearing, hard, okay. Right, a hard surface like that that's frictionless relatively. Okay. Um, and, and, uh, and, and that seems to be effective with, at a fairly early stage in people's um, experience with getting getting them to, to make that leap to the, to the third more insubstantial area, the substance, substantial and substantial. Cool, good, yeah, beautiful. Scott. Uh, just real quick, um, it's interesting you're talking about this because like in the last couple of days or week, uh, when I've been doing cloud hands, so you know the lead hand is the yang hand and the other one, I've, it's just been really interesting that I've been noticing as the lead hand goes up, feeling the other one filling as it's, you know, as it's becoming more young. And it's really been interesting to really feel the, the interplay of one becoming more and one less substantial at the same time. It's really been interesting. Nice. Good. Okay. Shall we, uh, shall we play with this stuff? Okay. Would you stand up, please? Okay, let's start by getting our three pillars established. Feel your central equilibrium. Feel the balls of your feet. Allow that to settle in. Relax your legs and your knees. Allow yourself to settle. Reach with the crown of your head, tuck in the chin, open the jade pillow gate. Feel yourself sinking into your feet, into the balls of your feet, but feel the weight spreading throughout the whole foot. At the same time, reaching upward with the crown. Relax your lower back and allow your sacrum to drop. Feel your coccyx dropping down toward the earth. So you're feeling the, the coccyx moving a different direction, the opposite direction from the crown. So there's lengthening your spine, creating space between the vertebrae, relaxing the muscles that support your spine. You push away from the earth and uh, settle in and turn as you're settling and spiral down. So you're releasing the qua. You're getting sung qua. Relaxing into your, the support of your legs, that yin support of your legs. You feel your body just kind of dropping while at the same time reaching up with the crown. We have these two forces. You feel the, the yin chi of the earth coming up through your feet and into your body. You feel the yang chi of the heavens coming through the crown down into the body. 
And reach with your elbows, rounding the arms a bit, feeling, emptying out your shoulders, letting all tension go in the shoulders. Lift with that clavicular notch here, that right there in your collarbone. So you're opening the chest, opening the shoulders as you do that. Point with your index fingers and feel the energetic coherence. Feel the whole body as a unit. We're going to do a, uh, an exercise where we're going to be exploring substantiality and where the weight is in the legs. So you're able to fine tune that. And also, at the same time, increasing your capacity to hold positions and, and to feel into the, the sung in your legs. So feel the ball of your left foot and set the left knee. So actually, first of all, just notice that right now your weight is 50-50. And feel the balls of both feet. So right now, there's both feet are substantial. That's because we're bringing our awareness to them. And we are filling. We're filling the, you know, both feet with our awareness, with our intention. And feel the energetic connection that that produces. You're not giving anything away by being double weighted here, by being, you know, having your weight evenly distributed. Now feel the ball of the left foot and set the left knee. And slowly you're going to sink into that left leg. So you're dropping, but you're, don't do it abruptly, just feel it very slowly as you're passing through that 50 50 point and slowly filling up the left leg till you have about 70% in the left leg. You want to feel yourself vertical. Feel that central equilibrium over your left foot. Now, push up with your left leg. You're coming up and slowly come back to center. So the weight is now 50-50. You distribute it. But notice that we've done a, we've exercised the yang aspect. We're pushing away from the earth now. And there will be still a, an energetic connection if you're feeling the balls of your feet. But notice that the root has diminished somewhat. And perhaps some of the energy flows because we're, we're, by pushing away from the earth, we're starting to disconnect from that yin chi by right? becoming more and more young or pushing up toward the heavens and we're feeling into that the 50 50 point here but there's um you know it's 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 a different flavor so now you feel the ball of the right foot so we're starting to let go of the left foot we're sinking now we're going to sink into the right leg so we're getting sung kwa, releasing down. So you're sitting down into the right leg. And notice that now your, your right leg is substantial. And notice what happened to your the chi. Feel the chi in your hands. And notice that by getting more sung into that right leg, that there was an increase in the chi in your hands. Not only the chi, but also the blood flow. Your circulation got really cranked up by doing that. 
Now you're gonna feel the ball of your left foot, set the left knee and go back and just go to the center. So you're now 50-50 again. And feel, compare that to the feeling of being both young. Now we're both yin, both legs are yin. And there's the attraction is more toward the earth now. We're still reaching up with the crown. So there is that yang pole connection there, but we are really moving toward the yin as, as in, in general. Now feel, are you gonna feel that ball of the left foot, set the left knee and sink into the left leg, releasing down into that left leg and feel the energy there, feel the energy up the left side of your body, feel particularly in your left hand. But you also feel, you also feel in your right hand as well. The whole system is, is getting really juiced up right now. Then a push away, so we're exercising that yawn, we're pushing away, coming up and back to center. Feel that connection, feel that connection there, feel the difference in energy as we move more to the young. We push away from the earth. Now we're at 50-50, but there's a different flavor to it. Now we're gonna go back the other way. Now we're gonna go into the left leg, feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee and Ah, oh, sink down into the left leg. Get very soon, releasing the quad. You're sitting down in that leg and feel the, the charge that comes out of that. Feel that, that flow of yin chi just kind of bubbling up and filling your whole body. So one of the things we're doing with this is we are activating the marrow in the bones. You know, a lot of that stuff that you're feeling right now is the fact that your marrow, your bone marrow is getting highly charged with, with fresh chi. And one of the ideas in Chinese medicine is that as you age, your bone marrow gets stale, turns kind of fatty and yellow and, and icky. And, uh, and so you, uh, you lose your vitality because the bone marrow is where your blood cells and, and lymphocytes get produced. So you want to keep that going. So now going to feel the ball of the right foot and back to center and feel both feet substantial, both balls substantial, both legs substantial and feel the effect on the whole system as you do that. So we're exploring now. And in doing this, we're actually creating more of this, this bone marrow chi that's, uh, that's filling up its kidney chi, but we're feeling it in the bone marrow. You're feeling that the electricity you're feeling in your hands is coming from, from there. That the cells are getting juiced up and they're going to, you know, the blood cells are going throughout the whole body. They're going to create vitality. They're going to create vitality. They're going to do repairs. They're going to create uh, enhanced immunity. And I feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee and sink into the right claw. So you're loading up that, you're feeling into that 70%. You want to keep your, your central equilibrium as you do that. You're not leaning at all. You're not pushing your butt out to the side. And push away from the earth, coming up, back to center. and feel the chi there. And 
Now just release down into both legs, re release both quads, sung into both qua and feel into that, feel the, feel that connection. Now coming up straight up and feel that. And straight down, releasing down. So in doing this, we're also learning how to fine tune the Sung Kwa. It's something that, you know, could take you many years to, to develop, but this is a way to kind of fast track that. If it's if the sun qua is a just a byproduct of doing your form, you may you can go by it for decades without noticing it. But here by putting it under the microscope, we are addressing it as something in and of itself and seeing the the positive effects that sun qua can have on your chi. So now from here, we're going to do a cloud hands. But we're going to do it not the way we usually do it, but, but using the same idea here. So that is, I'm going to feel the ball of my left foot, set my left knee. We're going to sink into that left quad going through the 50-50 the, the point and reaching up with my right hand reaching out. My weight is about 70% of my left leg. Now I feel the ball, I'm gonna push away from with my left leg. So I'm coming up, which is something I wouldn't ordinarily do when I'm doing my form, but for this, for our purposes here, I'm coming up and feeling that young and turning. Feel the ball of the right foot and ah, sink into the right leg. So I'm sung qua in my right leg, reaching out. Now feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee and sink down going and stop at the 50-50 point. And feel that. Feel your right hand reaching down, your left hand reaching up, and both of them having a sense of fullness too. So they're kind of both expanding as well as reaching down and up. So we're in 50-50. And turn, sink into the left quad and reach. Push away with the left leg coming up. Hold. Feel that young expansion now. Both feet are substantial, 50-50, but both are very alive very connected and turn. Sink, feel the ball, the left foot sink down. Hold at 50-50. Left foot, sink, reach. And both hands down. Feel it to your hands. Feel the chi throughout your whole body. Feel it to your feet. We didn't have to do a lot of reps to get uh, 
to get this to happen. We pray. It's, it's how much your of your awareness, your attention, and your intention you're willing to focus. We did this in just a few minutes. And we can accelerate that process so that it can happen in a few seconds. Feel the ball of your right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, step in. Take a deep breath. And disappear the chi. Feel into the emptiness. Please have a seat. <laughs> Would you like to put that into words, Nick? <laughs> Huge. <laughs> um, yeah, my I uh, feel like Popeye right now. Now my <laughs> arms and hands. I just, you know, uh, all I need is a can of spinach. I'm ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> I am what I am. <laughs> I am what I am. Yeah, standing next to him was really distracting because he's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm making a noise. It was, it it was noise. Just, it just, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Wow, they're, yeah, everything is giant. Yeah, powerful. Wonderful. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. Appreciate that. Scott. I have to say, I got too much yang on that, and it wasn't really all that comfortable. No, 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 it won't be. <laughs> you want about you want to have about 80% yin, 20% yang on this, because otherwise it, it gets really uncomfortable. Well, yeah, and it felt like, where's the, where's, where's the earth? I, where's my, you know, where's my mom? <laughs> Lynn. Um, so when I was more weighted on the left side, I would become very aware of the, just the root in my right side, right? And vice versa. Like, so... I don't know if that's like feeling the yin there or what exactly that is, but but it was very cool because it was like weight over here on the left, but and rooted, but also just the way that other root was just still there, still available if I needed it. You know, cool. nice, terrific, wonderful, Peter. Yes, you're on mute, Peter. You know, I'm such a beginner, I, uh, but I'm amazed that I really did feel it a little bit. You know, uh, that was very encouraging. Um, and the the question I have, I may have asked this before. You know, I'm wondering if, especially if you bring this principle into doing cloud hands, you know, more fluidly and faster, um, if the um, the connection with the hands 
can actually maybe that's what we just did. I'm just understanding it now. If the if the hand practice um, uh, helps the uh, the sinking into the yin in the uh, the the sum qua. If the if you're actually sort of guiding and helping the um, the sum qua with what you're doing with your hands. Uh, could be if, it, if if that's what it did for you, then that's what it's doing. You know, okay. Uh, you know, but it's it's the two are independent because we, we did the first one first, right? We did the the sum qua first, and then and then we added the hands as an expression of that chi, because there's there's so much going on at that point. We want to be able to, okay, now you're moving your arms and you realize you don't need a lot of muscular contraction to right. create a big effect with, with, your, with your arms at that point. But it, it is, in, in, in the sense, it is self it's reciprocal. That's, so, a, that's the word I was just thinking, you know, that there's a reciprocity. The hands help the, the qua, the qua helps the hands. And perfect. The perfect. Yeah. If you if you if you're doing that, then 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 that's you're on the right page. You're you're, you're doing great. Keith. Hey folks. Uh you know, it wasn't real comfortable, but it was there was a level of intensity there that uh, in a great way that I found to be able to concentrate on your body parts at the same time, kind of empty it out, if that makes sense. And uh, my top of my head was tingling. So that was pretty intense. Good, 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 good. Thanks, Keith. Cool. Uh, anybody else? All good, okay. So um, yes. So as we're uh, well, let's 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 shift shift gears here and uh, stand up again and take this. Now we got a lot of chi going on. Let's uh, let's take it and do something else with it. So standing up. Okay, first, I want you to uh, I got it now. All right, here we go. We're going to go through the same process. Left leg release, sink down. We're going back to the, the, the just the first one without the cloud hands and then up. Feel the center and down. Sink into the right leg. Back to center. Left leg, sink, release. Get really comfortable in that left leg. Push away, coming up, back to center. Right ball, set the right knee and sink into the right ball. Down. Back to center. Now I'd like you to execute that maneuver again without moving. So you're sinking into the left. Sun Kwa. Pushing away, coming up. Double yang, sink into the right leg, sung, back to center. Again, left leg.
Double Young, center. Right leg. Back to center, double yin. Now keeping that potentiality present in your awareness. Now bring your awareness to your chi high point, the um, uh, like three inches below your navel. Bring your awareness to that and bring simultaneously bring your awareness to the bubbling well points at the uh, uh, at the at the in the in the foot the kidney one points and you can also feel the balls of your feet create the the young support for that so connect those three points the two in the feet and the, the chi high point. Now do that same exercise without moving while connecting those points. And you don't have to think about the points, you just hold them. You just have them in your awareness, the same way you have your, your shoulders in your awareness or your hair. You're not thinking about them, but they're there. Now speed that process up so that you're feeling that yourself circling progressively faster while connecting those three points. Now let all that go. Just feel into your state of being without any focus at all. Step in. Deep breath. Yeah. And disappear the chi. Dissolve it into emptiness. Please have a seat. <clears throat> Keith. You know, you mentioned the feeling of a circle as this energy is transferring. For me personally, uh, you know, the more repetitions that I kept going back left and right, the more fluid it seemed to get, and the more natural it seemed. And for me, it was more of a figure eight than a circle of just my energy transferring left to right in my mind, but also in my body. So that was pretty cool there, Rick. 
Cool. Lynn? <laughs> <laughs> no real words, just, um, well, I don't know if you said loud gun points, but my loud gun points were also, you know, totally playing along um, just because they didn't want to be left out. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> loud gun points, everybody, is, is right here in the palm of your hand. And, uh, yeah, it's been a little stressful the last couple of days for us. And that just let everything out, but in an energizing rather than like a home sort of way, but in a whoo sort of way. Nice. If that makes sense because it was Beautiful. wonderful. And Nick was giggling. <laughs> just a little, just a little. <laughs> Great. Anybody else? Peter. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> Good. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Those are the fewest <laughs> words you've ever said, Peter. <laughs> yeah, I'm learning. I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you all so much. This was a lot of fun. Oh, Keith, one more thing. Looking forward two weeks from today, hanging with you folks in uh, Sedona, by the way. Oh, cool. Looking forward to it. Be fun. Awesome. Great. Okay. Love you all. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Maria. Thanks, Maria. Bye. Bye, guys. All right.